Hello and welcome, where we are going to build a dirty air box for this DIY wind tunnel that I made in my garage. Because I wanted to see and share things in a wind tunnel that nobody's ever seen before. But right now, it's not working like I hoped it would. It's not, it's not as perfect as I want it to be because of this little fan right here. This little fan was with this bracket right here. Now there's two problems, one being this little fan. This fan, although it has a high RPM, it's really small. So all the air around it has to be drawn in and kind of compressed through this small outlet. That's where this fan comes into play. This is the Noctua NFA20 FLX. Not sponsored, but it's really cool. This fan is twice the size of the first fan that I bought. And I'm excited about that because what this means is that there's less of a pressure differential when the air is pulled through the wind tunnel all the way out the other side. So I have two options. Option one, 3D print the whole thing. Option two is 3D print part of it. For each of these decisions, it comes with pros and cons. Number one in the pros, it's cheap. It's $13 for a roll of Overture filament that I can buy on Amazon and be here in two days. I already have two rolls on the way. They should be here tomorrow. The second pro is that it's easy to model. I can literally press a button and it will create the walls for the dirty air box. I don't have to do a whole lot of extra designing on that side of things. However, this is where the pros stop and the cons start. The first con is the print bed. My print bed is 200 by 200 millimeters, which means the second con is that it's complicated. My print bed is smaller than the wind tunnel that I made. Therefore, I would have to cut and print the dirty air box in such a way that it can be assembled without any air leakage as possible. That sounds really complicated. The other option we have is designing it in part so that way it can be filled with plexiglass or foam core poster board. First pro is it gives us options. We can make the, we can make a window so we can see what the air is doing as it's exiting the wind tunnel. I like that option. The second pro is that it uses a lot less filament because we're not filling the entire thing that there's a gap. And so all we would need to do is 3D print the edges. This also brings with it less print time. That brings us to our first con, the design. When we print the whole thing, there's a button that I can press to create the walls of the dirty air box. However, here I would need to create all four sides to be able to print in such a way. And I would also need to create a, I would also need to create a channel for the plexiglass or foam core board to sit in that it would be snug enough to not let any air gaps happen. Now, naturally, if I get this right, then that would, that would be better. But getting this gap tight enough would be hard. Now, if I could figure this out, this would be easier because for the air to escape out this way, it would have to come in, make a turn, make, well, make one turn, two turns, three turns, four turns to be out of there. But if I get this right, then it would, it would mitigate a lot of that because it would make it harder for the air to get out of the wind tunnel. So there's a lot of consideration. So I think I'm gonna go with number one. And here's why. I have filament on the way. And so I think it'll be relatively easy to do. Two, oh, that just felt like a brain blast. New idea. I'm gonna combine both ideas. On the back side and the bottom, I'm just gonna 3D print the whole thing. On the top side and the front, I'm going to create it in such a way that we can add a window. I would 3D print the top and the sides, but I'd print them separately, fitting the dimensions of clear acrylic. Now I'm gonna use the same clear acrylic that I got at Lowe's, so that way I can go back and just find the same thing and then boom, bop, beep, done. Next month, I will add a window so we can see what's happening in the wind tunnel. I'm very excited about this. I'm also kind of nervous. So I'm gonna spend a lot of time trying to figure out how that works and then I will be back here with a finished product. Here it is. Now, uh, let's see if we can figure out how to put this thing together. Um, one thing I'm gonna try is to 
close all these gaps that I had to, to make because of the size of my print bed. I'm gonna see if I can close them. I'm gonna tape the seams, use the glue gun, and then smooth the glue out to see if we can get, get a smooth finish. First, I need to tape this guy. And the thought is that we're gonna pull the tape off before it uh, dries, just to see if we can make it a, a little bit nicer. I don't know if this is gonna work but it feels smart. At 144, put a little dab. And one right there. All right, here we go. Oh, this. Oh, jeez. I think it's already dry. Wow, that's not, okay. This may not work like I thought it was going to. Um, so now we need to get all the glue off. I need something to smooth the glue because we're gonna have to, gonna have to go fast. Try it again uh, with a hotter glue temperature. Here we go. Come on. Oh my God, this, this is not going to work like I wanted it to. weird because the moment that the glue hits the other pieces, which makes sense, it just gets cold and it cures. I don't know what you call that with hot glue, but all right, I'm going to have to let this sit. We can try this. This piece will sit right underneath here. And actually, you know what? Let's just, it's already like tight enough. We may just add the glue on the seams keep the air from coming apart and then down the bottom to hold it to this guy. But let's try. Okay, even pressure. Oh, that sounds horrible, but it's working. And then before it dries, oh, okay, we can clean that up maybe. Yeah, that filled the gap a little bit. A little gummy, but that's okay. Okay. That should, because I don't want, I'll do it on the bottom. Since this is gonna be the bottom, we'll practice. What I may do, I bought this, uh, I bought, uh, bought this hot glue gun on Amazon and it works with the Milwaukee batteries and you can increase the temperature of the, of the nozzle to melt the glue, which is, which is a cool feature that I've never had before. But for this stuff, I'm loving it because I think that I need to turn it up again. We're gonna go uh, 165 and see if it makes it a little bit more uh, fluid. So that way it comes off. I don't know, but I gotta figure out how to not melt the PLA, which now is a problem. All right, and oh yeah, that was cleaner. Oh yeah, nice. And that should dry pretty quick, but it should keep out all the air bubbles. And I mean, this joint doesn't need glue, but it's, it's really strong. So now we got to think about this because if I come in from, if I come in from 45 degree angles with all of them, which means like if I do this and then this and then this and then this, I don't think it's going to work. So I have to figure out a plane to just kind of go from right now I have the bottom one. So if I do the top, then I can do the front and everything should kind of, that's what we're going to try next, but clean up this mess. Hmm. Could have been bad. I need a different blade. I'm gonna use, this is gonna be overkill. Just push the finger. Okay. Sorry, man. Put that knife up. Then, okay. Close that too. Uh oh, something is not landing. Uh oh, uh oh. That's not good. This guy goes, should go. Okay. All right. What happened? I think one of these pieces got more, but we may do now. 
Well, taking a lot longer than I wanted it to. Oh, nice. That's like it got warped. Oh yeah, it's definitely warped. Okay, oh, need. That was not good. Just set it down. So now this is not going well. Alright, that's better. And then fit in here. And then this. Yeah. Alright, now the other thing that we need to see. This actually fits on here. So, why is this so wobbly? My lesson from a second ago. All right. Oh, yes. Oh. Okay, really, I need it support up. Not worried about just. Oh, glue on the back. That's what's happening. They little screw. <laughs> well, on Brad's side, sitting on top of it. Now, hmm. I am out of my depth. One. Put that away. Okay. This guy's sides. Oh, this one's now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm gonna truth. Let's see. Works this way. I gotta line everything. I think I put too many tiny connectors on here. Honestly, this one we should put on my us connect. Sound great. Okay. Pretend like we didn't hear that. Ten. Golly. First off. Put the knife up. Don't make a mistake. Right. There, it's so close. Oh. Ha ha. Okay, that was part of it. Look, it's held in there. So then it should sit in this dumb. Nope. Oh. We are gonna make some modifications. Okay, it is, it's all together. We're gonna try this seam. Ah. That one worked like a charm. Now, just close up these seams. Feeling good about this. Um, probably should have tested it, but uh, oh well, I'm ahead of myself. All right, he's on there. you have made some slats to put in here, so that way we can test it. At some point, I'll make it clear. Right now it's on there. What? Okay, we got it. Let's see uh, let's See what happens. I don't know if this is gonna work and if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. But just for the giggles, let's see what happens. When we... Because I still need to print the slats. It's better. Oh, this, this piece is not long enough. What are we doing? Okay, Let's see if it gets better as we tape. Oh, cool! Here we go. That's, that is uh, quite a bit better. Um, I like how it's much more straight. Oh, that's nice. Okay, well, I'm gonna go print these slap pieces and we'll 
We'll test it again. See, see if it actually, see if it helps. But I'm very excited to be able to see in here someday. Cool. Okay. So these, uh, oh, wait, that's the same side. These guys are the, you know, are going to be the temporary windows for this thing, the dirty fan box. So it should fit. Oh, they don't fit. They don't fit. That's not good. What did I do wrong? Well, okay. I obviously got to figure out how to get these to fit. Uh, Cause they, it's not what we want. I think the shape is right. However, it's just off by a lot. Good news, like we saw earlier, this works. This concept works. You know the phrase, measure once, cut twice. Uh, I thought I measured quite a bit of times and it did not work. I should have measured what I had actually printed to fit in here and it doesn't work. However, this concept works. Like we saw earlier when we taped it, it made this a lot more laminar. However, next time, what I wanna do is create a hood that extends I want to create a hood that extends out this way, but part of what I want to do and what I've seen you guys mention is to have a diffuser in the back. So what I'm thinking is if I can find, if I can find some sort of mesh material like this, it will equalize the pressure in the back of the wind tunnel so that when the wind, so that when the air is pulled through it, the pressure is the same so that the air can move through in a uniform fashion. I don't know if that's gonna work. Now would be a great time for you to comment what you think the best idea for this area would be. My idea is like a hood that goes out this way with a mesh screen in the back. What type of materials should that mesh be? Because what I'm fighting against is price, simplicity, because really I wanna figure out how to do this so that I can make a smaller one so that maybe if you wanted to make one at home, then you have an idea of where to start. And this is obviously so far a series about how to not make a wind tunnel or how to, how to make and upgrade a wind tunnel using what you have. And uh, I am honestly very proud of this, but I would like to know your thoughts in the comments. Did you like this? What would you do different? Subscribe if you wanna see some really random crazy things. Oh, okay, that turned off. Some really random crazy things in the wind tunnel in the future, but I would also love to know your ideas for the vent hood is what we're gonna call it, I don't know. But otherwise, thanks for watching, glad you were here, and goodbye.